Hey guys, Dr. Ian here, Redtail Wellness Centers, and of course I wanna to talk a little bit today about this question right here, natural versus synthetic hormones. Hope you guys are doing well. It's cold outside, but baby, it's warm in here, right? So, um, hey, natural versus synthetic, what's the deal? Well, again, we work with a lot of thyroid clients, and I get this question all the time. First of all, disclaimer, I don't prescribe thyroid medication, I don't take people off of thyroid medication, okay? Okay, disclaimer over, moving on. All right, so what's the deal? Why do we take it? Why is it needed? And of course, what are your different options and, and what do I think about that? Well, I have my own opinion, obviously. I, everyone has an opinion and I have my own opinion on this as well. First of all, should you be on it? Well, when they check your hormone, right? So this TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, all right? And if that's elevated, right? And let's just say you have all the classic symptoms of hair loss and you know, problems with your fingers and your nails and you're cold all the time, you're constipated and you can't think straight because you got the brain fog, right? And you're gaining weight even though you're basically walking by the salad bar. You're not even eating the salad bar, but you're walking by the salad bar and you're still gaining weight, okay? Well, those are obviously classic low thyroid functions, hypothyroid symptoms, right? And so, of course, when you go into a provider, a doctor, and they measure this hormone, they're, they're going to then actually give you a thyroid hormone replacement, right? So our thyroid hormone replacement therapy. And that can be natural, okay? And that could be synthetic. First of all, bottom line, should you be taking it, right? Now, if you respond to it, that's an indication that, hey, look, you can actually benefit from this over time. But is that actually the root cause? Is that the reason why that you actually need? Do you have a thyroid deficiency? Or there's really something called primary right so primary thyroid failure and what I mean by that is that if you're actually your thyroid quote-unquote poops out okay now the vast majority of people do not actually have whoop, <laughs> do not have that problem right and that's what the research says 1990s research article came out and said that people with elevated TSH 90% of those people actually have an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's, okay? That was discovered in 1912 by Dr. Hashimoto. So essentially, the thyroid is being attacked by the immune system, which is causing loss of thyroid tissue, and then from there, that's causing the symptoms that you have. So you can use a medication, which may help you replace some of those lost thyroid hormones, but it's never gonna address the root cause and it does not slow the progression of the disease down, right? So, separate issues here. Now, if you do actually need that thyroid hormone replacement, well, what are the actual diagnostic criteria? So, according to the American Endocrine Society, they say TSH should be greater than 10, okay? And you should have low T4 levels. Okay, now a lot of times doctors don't even check T3, but that's an important marker as well, right? And there's obviously, a, there could be an issue of conversion of T4 into T3, right? And you can just measure that based on, on blood chemistry. But if this is present, okay, American Endocrine Society says, well, then you should actually go on a trial of thyroid hormones. Now, doing less than 100, gotta erase the board. Doing less than 100, and 50 micrograms may not even budge your labs, okay? And taking less than 150 micrograms may also cause heart palpitations, inward nervousness, anxiety, those issues. Meaning that, okay, especially if you're taking T3, you may actually provoke some symptoms. You may actually be revving things up too fast. So most of the time when you go to your doctor, they're gonna recommend levothyroxine or Synthroid, okay? And those are T4-based thyroid hormone replacement medications, all right? Right, four, meaning four iodine molecules bound to tyrosine. Now, there's also tyrosin, okay? That's more of a natural form, natural. What I mean by that is it's, it's still synthetic, but they basically don't use a lot of dyes. And, bind, and, and the binders aren't as bad, so if you're gonna use a synthetic, tyrosin is actually probably more of what I would recommend. Um, and then there's, of course, there's the quote-unquote natural, right? So the natural, guys, that's gonna be your WP Armor, right? 
nature throid armor, right? So WP, right? So we're talking about natural WP here, armor, right? Nature throid. So those are the different forms of the, the natural. Now that comes with T4 and T3, okay? Meaning that you get levothyroxine, and you're getting triiodothyronine. You're getting T4 and T3, okay? So that can be more beneficial, especially if people are a slow and sluggish converter of T4 into T3. But you have to be careful because you can get hyperthyroid symptoms, okay? That inward nervousness, trembling, heart palpitations, anxiety, okay, insomnia, that can actually come through taking that thyroid medication. So you gotta be careful as far as what you're doing. Now, bottom line, no matter what you're doing and what you're taking, you gotta come back, okay? And at six weeks, six weeks after starting that medication, you should be repeating labs, okay? TSH, total and free T4 and T3. Okay, if you've never checked your reverse T3, that should be checked, but that's a totally different subject, all right? And we should figure out, are you responding to this and are your symptoms improving, okay? And then of course, are you actually going after the root cause of what's going on here? Always bring it back to the basics, the most important thing, which is actually gonna slow the progression of the disease down, okay? Now, there are glandulars that you can take, okay, that are natural, can be prescribed by any doctor out there, all right, any person, you can walk into actually a health food store and you can buy these right now. The FDA basically allows there to be, well, by default, they allow there to be real true thyroid hormones in this, okay, because the supplement companies are not measuring those thyroid hormones. So you can use, like we carry something called GTA, um, there is, uh, from Mountain States, there's a thyroid um, as well, and those are glandular products and those can actually also be really beneficial. Sometimes that might work better for you too. No matter what, you need to come back and you need to repeat those labs. When you repeat the labs, do not take that thyroid hormone the morning prior to going and getting the blood work done, okay? That can totally skew your results. Always, always, always take that after Okay, and I'm not, it's not just coming from Dr. Ian, but this is what, again, endocrinologists are typically recommending, is that take the thyroid medication after the labs so that you can actually look and see, here's what's going on with your baseline, okay? So hopefully that helped a little bit. I know some people want to, to have, you know, there, there's a philosophical, you know, conversation that you can have about, you know, I should be taking more of a, a natural versus a synthetic. More important here, guys, is, is whether or not you actually respond to it, if your labs improve. And then obviously, if your labs improve but you still feel like crap, well, why? Ask the question why, okay? That's what functional medicine is gonna do. It's gonna dig down a little bit deeper and you should demand that from your doctors, okay? All right, there it is. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something, okay? And um, make it a great one, okay? Bye-bye.